Next, though, an appeal to report concerns about terrorism after a Derby factory worker was convicted of preparing an attack. Munir Mohamed bought chemicals for a powerful bomb and researched the deadly poison ricin. Well, now police say they're also worried about radicalised fighters coming back from Syria. Our social affairs correspondent, Jeremy Ball, can tell us more. Jeremy, good evening to you. Um, how rare are these terror plots? Well, it's over 25 years, Anne, since the last fatal attack here in the East Midlands. That was, of course, when the Army recruiting Sergeant Michael Newman was shot dead in Derby in an attack claimed by the Irish National Liberation Army. Cast your mind back, though, last year, of course, to Manchester, to London, to those deadly vehicle attacks, to those uh, teenage concert goers killed by a suicide bomber. We heard in this court case that Munir Mohammed was chillingly close to a devastating attack of his own. And Derby's police commander told me that he's now particularly concerned about people who've been radicalised in war zones. You have to remember that Syria has been a, a unique conflict in the modern age uh, and we don't know how people that have been out there that might be coming back to our communities have been affected. We've also seen in the last 18 months that the terrorists have changed their methods. Their attack methods are crude. When you add those crude methods to people that have been radicalised in a terrible war zone, um, you, you, we, we, the police, the security service and the public have to be aware of that, have to watch out for it. In reality, how big a threat is terrorism right here in the East Midlands? Well, the cases that we know about are still very few and far between, really. Most of those involve Islamist extremists wanting to fight overseas. Uh, this is Kabir Ahmed. He was a well-known extremist from Derby who joined the so-called Islamic State and then went on to kill eight Iraqi policemen in a suicide bombing. Ryan Councils from Nottingham and Mudassir Hussain's from Derby, they're both in prison now for trying to join fighters who are linked to IS. You might remember Zamir Gumra from Leicester who was jailed last year. He was trying to radicalise two schoolboys by showing beheading videos, while Adil Al Haq from Sutton and Ashfield sent money and travel advice out to British IS fighters. And these men were far right extremists. Roger Smith from Nottingham was a survivalist who was jailed under terrorism laws. Michael Piggin wrote plans for a mass killing at the old Burley College in Loughborough where he admitted making explosives but two separate juries failed to agree on whether he was also guilty of terrorism charges. Now, of course, those are the recent cases we know about. What we don't know is who the intelligence services are still tracking, how many people are still on their radar here in the East Midlands. And the police say this information they get from us, from the public, is so crucial because it helps them decide which of those suspects are the greatest threat. And as Chief Superintendent Allen puts it, to avoid chasing wild geese.